I've got my hands on Windows 10X, but is it really the Chrome OS killer Microsoft wants it to be? One thing we have talked a lot about on this YouTube channel and podcast and everywhere else is Windows 10X. And today we've got our hands on the OS. It leaked out uh, a couple days ago, actually, but here we are going to be taking a first look at Windows 10X, everything from boot to shutdown. And so I'm not going to belabor the point. Let's just dive in, shall we here? Now, keep in mind, this is running in a VM inside of a window, so it's not perfectly cropped to 1920 by 1080, but this will give you an a really good flavor of what Windows 10X looks like. Kicking off here, the Windows 8 spinning dots, well, they're finally gone, and in its place are smooth, circular motions. Now, the performance is a little bit lower than I would have expected. Um, this is running in a VM with four cores and eight gigs of RAM. I did try 16 gigs of RAM, but it didn't seem to make a whole lot of a difference. Um, so this is the complete boot up experience. Performance and everything else, I wouldn't read too much into that if that's what everyone is thinking. It's like, hey, this kind of takes a while, but I wanted you guys to get that OG, that authentic experience of what the first boot animation is going to look like. And so this is what most people might be greeted with if they uh, install, try to install Windows 10X from scratch. And here we go. So that is what it starts to look like when you start up a Windows 10X machine for the first time. Very clearly a little bit different than what we see in Windows 10 uh, today. And you'll see why I mean here a little bit different because some of the verbiage and dialogue here looks familiar, right? You still have some of the same text prompts, some of the same questions. And so I'm going to walk through what we see here, but this is the first landing page here. And you can see some accessibility options, just action center items down there. Not a whole lot down there. Uh, I do play with it here a little Little bit just to try to see what there is um, you can see you've got options for keyboards you've got options for ease of access all these standard sort of functionality that we see today in windows 10 but in a visually more pleasing format microsoft has done uh, a pretty solid job here to try to redesign the experience and this is the pop-up keyboard which you can see is also movable as well, which means this technically could work on a, uh, a tablet or something. And there is Clippy. I know there are some people who are probably concerned that Clippy wasn't going to be in Windows 10X, but right there, right even before you get into the dashboard or, or the desktop, if you want, you can go grab Clippy uh, just hanging out. And actually, I took a screenshot here. And if you follow me on Twitter, that's what I tweeted out about uh, how Clip Clippy is still in the OS. So fret not. Anyway, so you can pick your country of origin um, where you are currently. I should say, and then you can just kind of dive right into here too. Nothing too crazy or outlandish. Um, it's really just kind of a vanilla Windows experience here. And just walking through, setting it up for personal or business use. You know, we've seen this type of stuff before. Here, I'm going to log into uh, an Outlook.com account. I believe you have to use a Microsoft account. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an Outlook account. It could potentially be Hotmail. Uh, but you do have to use a Microsoft uh, MSA at the end of the day. So it does work with two-factor authentication here. No big surprise. All this stuff is pretty dated. So please don't try to hack my account. Um, and I've already changed things from what I logged in here with. Anyways, so... Um, this is me taking time to approve that 2FA. It does take a little bit longer than I was honestly anticipating for when I hit approve, but it could be something to do with waiting in a VM uh, or sitting in a VM or running, if I could use uh, the proper terms here, running in a VM. But you can, again, see just sort of that refreshed experience of, you know, setting up a new Windows machine. It's more friendly. It's more nice at the end of the day. It sort of has a new design language, um, if you will. I wouldn't quite call it fluent, which is something Microsoft have been pushing pretty heavily uh, for a while but you can see here that pin the OS is nearly complete but it's definitely not completely uh, complete so there are still bugs I actually do crash the OS at one point here um, later in the video but again you can see all of the controls that you have available to you and they toggle on and off just like they do in Windows 10 actually those buttons still look very Windows 8 like um, if I'm honest and so here you go this is the you know the home screen the dashboard the landing page this is where you end up after you answer all the steps and it's pretty watered down if I'm honest like there's not a lot going on here this is at least feels like a pretty lightweight OS like you can see when I right mouse click there only thing I can do is change the background um, it, this functionality in here is a little broken. I will fully admit that. So what, you'll see some lag and, and everything else and don't get too concerned. But you can see when you click an app, it actually says installing. And so I'm not sure if that's downloading from the store, uh, but you get that every single time. And you can see here, you're pretty much limited to running apps full screen. That's the only option you have right now. And so 
as of right now it's full screen with the one exception with the one exception of the snipping tool which i'll show you later now if you want to install an app say like google chrome you know just playing around i know the old joke edge is only good for downloading chrome just kidding that that was an ie joke uh so you can download you know traditional windows apps but you'll see here when you try to run them now i did edit some of this stuff out uh because there, I, I sat here and waited and it just it feels like it times out but it doesn't really time out it just goes away that was me doing the transition but nothing Nothing really happens here um, with this. So you click it, it runs, or it tries to run and nothing happens. It just, it's a weird experience. Um, and so I actually went hunting for the file and you can actually see this is the file explorer. If you click the downloads, you can see the chrome.exe and it's nothing. You can't do anything. It actually feels like it's running in OneDrive and I'm pretty sure that it is. It's just on the web. And this is kind of the theme. This feels very like web centric. It's hard to explain just because it feels like things are running, like they're streaming. It, I know it's not quite true uh, completely, but that's what it honestly feels like. And so here you can can see me just trying to screw around with an image um, downloading it and seeing what happens if you go to save as and it honestly it just pulls up OneDrive um, no surprise there and you can't download it and eventually open it I did the wrong save as and then I was expecting it to be in downloads but it wasn't and so I could have gone and fished and opened it up um, with the photos app that is included with 10x but that's sort of like you're seeing the core elements here of how this OS is going to run. It's really just sort of these one app at a time. You can jump between them. You can see the task switching here. There is force close, by the way, um, which I'm not sure if that's new terminology for Windows itself, um, but that's very familiar with on like iOS and Android. You know, you got to force close an app. And so everything runs big it runs bold and you'll see here the one windowed app which is snipping tool again this is in windows 10 today but you can click it uh, and then you can take uh, screenshots just like you would on any other os nothing too like outlandish here it's just a little interesting that again you can only run these things and as full screen which really kind of means that this is tailored to those lower end devices this is going to be an interesting play for microsoft you can see me again opening an app and voila, it's full screen because that is all that you are going to be able to do. You're going to be running things full screen and that's okay, I think, for the demographic that they're targeting with Chrome OS. Now you can see some here new design language in the Action Center or pop-up window. I'm not sure if they're going to rename this for uh, Windows 10X, but you can see some of those rounded corners. You can see some of the updated icon icons and everything else. Um, the It's just a different design language at the end of the day from what we've seen with Windows 10. Here you can see me just kind of hovering over the buttons looking at those uh, pop-up animations or contextual call-outs there and you can rotate the screen um, if you really want to do that not a whole lot of options in here if I'm honest just a couple bare bones things that would allow you to be up and running and using Windows 10 X in a in an environment and get work done um, although I did not see office apps pre-installed but if you go to OneDrive and you open a word app which I will do here in a little bit um, it just opens in the web, right? You go to the web version and you can edit it there. Uh, you'll see here this panel uh, in the settings apps always seem to like lag or cause the app to crash. So uh, I was trying to screw around and, and see what all the settings I could change, but it just, you can see right there, it just didn't, it didn't want to run. It was like, nope, you're Brad, you're not going to get to play with that today. And that's okay. That's okay. Here's sort of the, the basic uh, call outs or updates for if you want to shut down the, the OS. It's again, you can, you can sort of get that feeling that it's really bare bones from the surface. We're going to need some more technical eyes to start digging under the hoods. This to see what truly is and is not there. They're calling this thing 10X, which I, I wish they would just call it something different because I, on one hand, it feels like Windows and it sort of looks like Windows, but it really doesn't act like Windows. Now, Microsoft has gone down this path before. We've got, we've seen like 10S and we've seen RT. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to get the store to run. You can see the Microsoft store icon right there. I'll click it here eventually. Um, I was just, again, you can see that installing feature. It just makes it feel like it's kind of streaming down and then it has to update. Um, you can move icons down around in the taskbar. What I really want to be able to do is to move the uh, start button, if you will, into the middle. I don't know why. For some reason, I want it centered between those icons. It's not the end of the world, but it's just, you know, I'd love to be able to drag that thing to the center because it kind of gets just pushed to the side and it's not always where you expect it. And so that's just some visual functionality that maybe Microsoft will introduce one day. Um, but here you see... Uh, if you look over here, oh, I was going to right mouse click there. I was trying to say, well, if you look there, uh, you can see the background and everything else. 
And so you can change it. You can update it here and clicking around just a little bit more. It makes it things a little bit more compact. I didn't quite like the large and the medium. I just like things all on a nice row. And you can see some neat little animations there. I was trying to drag the icons to like the quote unquote desktop, if you will, which does not work. It just, it doesn't work. And so when you click on a Word file, you will see that, hey, it opens up in OneDrive or Word on the web, which I think is going to be okay for a, a sizable portion. Uh, again, this sort of cements the idea that this is a more web web focused OS, not web OS, like L that runs on LG TVs that used to run on Palm hardware many, 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 many years ago. Um, but it does, it just feels like a web centric OS. And I think that's a good thing. I just hope that Microsoft doesn't butcher the name of, of calling it windows. And then everyone's going to think it's windows, uh, when it ships. Um, and then they go try to install Chrome and then it just, it, it doesn't work. Um, uh, Again, don't get caught up in the performance of the downloading here because this is running in a VM that is constrained on my machine for very obvious reasons. And so you'll see here, I tried to launch the store, just nada, it, it's nothing, it, it's, it's not gonna run for me. And so that is unfortunate. You can rearrange the icons in that little fly up start menu. I, I'm assuming they're gonna call that the start menu. Um, and you can see here that the OS completely crashed. I, I cut the clip and re, relaunched the, the VM. But you can see here, it is moving around and just hanging on out. You can do what you need to. There's some more icons, the infamous My People app. Um, is making an appearance in this at least iteration again this is not the final iteration this is not the shipping version this is just a version that found its way to the internet and allowed me to play with it i really keep right mouse click on the desktop looking for more context but the context menus are just really really simple there's not a lot of customization that's going on here there's not a lot of tweaking this is definitely not an os for a power user this is an os for a lightweight piece of hardware that just kind of needs to connect to the web and do the basics and i think that's okay and i think that's okay and that is you know that's a quick look at windows 10x this is the shutdown screen nothing crazy here and then the vm just does shut down and as you guys saw there in that clip, I think that this is okay. I think it's okay as long as Microsoft targets and markets and, and names the product correctly. I don't, I, I don't know if they're going to call it 10X publicly when it does ship. Um, primarily because, I, again, I don't want people to get confused about what it is and isn't Windows and doesn't operate like Windows, but it's really simple and lightweight. I think this might finally be the OS that would work to compete with Chrome OS. The problem is that Chrome OS has a really, really powerful branding behind it and people know what they're going to get. That's why Microsoft needs to be careful here and they also need to put it on the right hardware and frame it in the right scenario. So we will be seeing this arrive later this year. I'm waiting for Microsoft to give us more information about 10X and their, their go-to market strategy, but that is your first look at Windows 10X. Do you guys think, and gals I should say, think that this can be a Chrome OS killer and competitor? I'd love to know. Hit the subscribe button and we'll catch all of you right back here next time.